welcome. This week, not the Andrew Neil show is not covering First Minister's questions because there ain't one. Uh, today we're going to have a wee chat about a Scottish constitution, and then we'll probably we might follow up with a rant about banking, bastards, and. Uh, Poor Mr. Diamond. Diamond? Diamante, is that what he's now called? Yeah, Diamante, because he's been downgraded, yeah. Well, let's start with the, this co the Scottish Constitution. The, the three of us went to a meeting in the Scottish Parliament organised by a group called the, the Constitutional Commission. Yeah. And it had been going about six years. And um, the meeting had two main strands to it. Um, one of them was about how to write who, should, who and how should write the constitution, and the other side of the, the other strand was when should it be written, and uh, there was some dispute about whether it should be ready, should be written before a referendum, half written at a referendum, written after a referendum, and you could pull back a bit and say, well, do we need a constitution at all? But I think you'll find that uh, most people would say we need a written one. Um, what were your impressions first, uh, Nori, of the meeting? Well, I think the first thing that maybe we should mention is there was eight people on the panel. Initially, there was only one female. There was only Leslie Widdop. She pulled out, kind of forcing their hand, um, and they ended up with three women on the panel, which I think is a godsend, because quite frankly, their contributions were the most interesting. That's true. Um, and Mind you, they did. The two... Two of the men that pulled out were Jerry Hassan, the most, yeah. Jerry Hassan and uh, Mike, Small. Oh, Mike Small, and they both would have been very interesting. Well, I, I just felt that it, it really did show two things. One, my kind of ignorance to um, a female viewpoint, because frankly, we don't spend a lot of time talking politics with the ladies. So from that point of view, I got a lot out of it. Um, I felt a lot of it was kind of the usual suspects. You know, it, it was nothing new until, well, we knew about the Iceland, Icelandic um, constitution and the crowdsourcing that they used. Mm -hmm. So that was Leslie's point. Um, Leslie Riddick. Yeah. But the, the thing that I came away with, the sort of social cohesion that could be generated by what goes into a constitution. Well, that's what I'm, my, my, that was my point, really, really, which I didn't bring up clear, clearly at the time, but um, I do feel that uh, whichever way the referendum goes, yes or no, um, there w there's going to be a split in Scottish society, culture, you know, and uh, uh, one way to prevent that being, or to help heal that the division, is to have a constitution at least underway. Because then you'd have a, to get a constitution, you'd have an agreement across the community of what kind of Scotland we want, whether it's in or out of the United Kingdom. Well, the big problem was the elephant in the room. It never really got mentioned the fact that the no campaign are going to take part in the discussion about constitution. Well, you were about that. I mean, that, that could be a challenge for someone to try and persuade the no campaign that, from my, from the argument I'm making that. Whichever way that, that, that it goes, the referendum afterwards, why don't we try to define what, what kind of Scotland we want? Well, the point, the point is they're going to argue that they want to stay in Britain and Britain's got a constitution. Britain hasn't got a constitution, but there's, there's an accepted... It's an unwritten constitution, which obviously leaves power in whoever's in charge. It's not an existing constitution. It's what comes up the hump of the Prime Minister at the time. That's true. Well, but Phil, what did you feel about the meeting? What was your impression? Um, well, the usual, there was the suits, um, and we had that guy that actually wrote up the Constitution, Elliot, Elliot, yeah. Elliot um, and I thought Kate, Kate Higgins, that is, actually uh, hit it right in the head when she was looking at the front, the, the front side, um, basically what a basic Constitution which would, yes, yeah, so, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, where's the gender balance, where's everything else, you turn it, all those things that, if you were to write a constitution in today's times, um, for all the back on, on, on navies. So he was just a typical bureaucrat, so nice enough guy, um, all the rest of it. But Kate says, well, the, the reverse side was what she would start with. 
and actually listening to the three women, uh, Leslie Riddick, and then what's her name? Porter? Sally. Sally, something. She's um Porter, she's a churchess. I've seen her through the policy. Policy's <laughs> part of the policy. That was really interesting. She was brilliant. She was as soon as you saw, you know, representing the Church of Scotland, I for one went, oh no. Yeah. And yet she spoke incredibly well. Mm -hmm. And hit lots of points that, quite frankly, I didn't expect the church. And she was American too. Yeah. Yeah, but she gave she she, she okay. gave you a feeling of uh, you know, like wanting to be involved. The three women actually knocked the pants off the yes. off, off, the, off the five seats, but then one of them was a chair, so he didn't really and say anything else. Um, mm -hmm. And then you had the Labour Party apparatchik um, at the time, Ross Martin, who right. basically looked at what everybody else said and kind of repeated he it. He summed up. And um, I mean, Patrick yeah, Harvey, I really was he, very disappointed yeah. in. Mm -hmm. I thought Ross didn't. What he, he did yeah. sum up quite well. No, he summed up very well. He's a, well, he, he works in a in, in a policy unit, so that's really what he does for a living. Yeah, and he listened to all the other yeah. speakers and then he summed up what they'd said, which was that nothing out of his head. No, and um, who was that? Willie Sullivan. He seemed to be another. He just he was described Compass as, from Compass. Yeah. Was that was no, 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 no. Compass. An was institutional was plodder. Was how he described himself. It's, uh, it's after Leslie. After Leslie, Leslie came up with the issue. She left the centre kind of mass kind of think tank. I mean, they still get loads from Compass and all that talking about so it. So it's a left wing it's Labour Party thing. Yeah, left the centre basically on, on that. But it's just like a, a talking so Like, that, I mean, to me, what, what happened there was that Leslie Willett's point about involving the people of Scotland and trusting them mm. to come up with the ideas that could be... Well, that was her point. She was... I mean, it, there but it was underlined by the contributions of the suits. Mm. Yes. And, I mean, Elliot... Mm -hmm. Elliot... I forget a second name. The, the chap who's written a book and suggested a, 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 a Scottish constitution. There was a, a definite gap between his position and Leslie's position. He, he... I mean, he kept going on about, you know, the we could look at other constitutions, pick the best out of them, da 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 Yeah, but if we don't go out with the normal group, the elite mm -hmm. that makes these decisions, you're getting no new ideas. Well, he's a natural civil servant. And actually, I really like Leslie's comment on this book, that she read a few pages and then she couldn't be bothered. Um, yeah, which, which really says it all. Because the three of them were actually thinking out of the box. You got a vision from Sally. Mm -hmm. um, and I did like Kate's contribution where she talked about, well, because they, they were looking, she was looking at, and she picked that TV program, Baldwin, the Danish TV program, um, which I don't know if you've seen, but it's how somebody comes into it, a woman, gets a job, first woman, prime minister, and starts taking it. And then, she's basically then corrupted by the suits and everything around you. That's, that's how I was quoted, she said, what constitutes Scotland? Yeah. Who do we want to become? That's what how she quoted it. And going back to um, Leslie, um, she kind of said, who writes the constitution? Entitlement in Scotland is how would I have written it. So well, I mean, it, it, that's the problem for me. The, you, two big problems is, if you want to kick it off now, I'm sorry, there is no way that the entitled members of the No Campaign are going to get involved. They can't, they can't do it. Their, their position has to be Britain, we stay in Britain, we stick with the British Constitution, which doesn't exist, but which they will insist does. So forget that. So there's a whole chunk of the population not going to be involved. Well, then because, you know, by default, they will follow. They'll by, follow. I think but, a lot by default, because so there, there is a lot of thought within the Labour Party, but there is a democratic deficit. Uh, I mean, when you're stuck in there with people that in the Labour Party. Yeah, in, in the Labour Party. And if you go, well, I mean, I, I'm having nothing to do with a completely negative organisation called the No Campaign. I mean, you have a look at me, just pop out their chest, and all they do is no, 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 no. But Phil, I mean, that underlines my problem with yeah. today's Labour Party, is they will not take part in this. Because they have to be pro the, the British, well, let's not say the British state, let's say. Yeah, let's say the British state, state. state, that's what it is. But this should be an opportunity that the Liberals, the Greens, the SNP, the Labour Party all grasp with two hands. Because it's an opportunity to put into the Constitution free education, mm -hmm. free health at point of delivery. Mm -hmm. All these things that are the majority of Scots in every poll you look at mm -hmm. believe are fundamental rights already. So, so you're, I mean, you're still... 
So that's the content of the, of the Constitution that you're, you're focused on. Can we pull back a bit and um, how do we get to that point where we sit down, who, let alone who gets to write the Constitution and what should be in it, but do we, how do we get even just to start? Well, the, it, the, the meeting came up with, um, it said that there would be a referendum roadshow. Now who was left on to organise that? But that was how the meeting ended. No, that was... Was that not the discussion about involvement? I mean, one of Kate Higgins' big things was the involvement of our youth, of the kids who are still at school, who don't have the right to vote yet. Who and the issue of their world, that the, the, yeah. the, because it's their future. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, the work is going to be done. And what that was about was a roadshow visit in schools. But the, no, those, it wasn't. It wasn't just to schools. This was. Um, this was, the, the, this was the result of the, of the meeting, and I'm not sure somebody was charged with um, taking that further. I'm not sure who it was. Well, they were basically all asking who would be involved in it. Well, and and everybody basically was going to be involved in it. I, I mean, my, my point on how do we start it, has, to me, it has to be a kind of guerrilla thing. I don't know how it started in Iceland. I'd rather presume it was started by some people talking on the internet. And it went viral. Population, what, of about three, uh, of about two thirds of Edinburgh makes it easier. It's not exactly the same, the same thing. But I'm sorry, if we've got ten times the population, why, why is that a problem? That's ten times the. New technology shouldn't be too difficult now, then. Yeah. Well, I mean, so in, at that stage, social networking wasn't really even mentioned, apart from the word crowdsourcing, which put people out who don't use social networking don't even understand. But that, the, the trick to this is to take it away from the politicians before they know it. So the trick is, as far as I'm concerned, that you get this out to the population. You don't make it official, you make it unofficial. So, we get a yes for, for Scottish independence. The week after that, it's a fait accompli. The people want to discuss the Constitution. And you guys sitting in Hollywood sit there shut up and listen. Is there any... That won't happen. Is there any role for us? I mean, at one point in the last week, I'm lying there in the middle of the night thinking, I wonder if I should focus on this Constitution. I mean, as I say, as of last week, after the meeting, I started another online magazine just to part of the Scottish Constitution, just trying to pull threads together into one place from all the different people that are already talking about the Constitution. Um, I mean, is there a role for us to get involved in campaigning for this? Because this is non-party. I'm, I'm not even sure. The people we saw at that meeting, I don't want most of them to have anything to do with it. Yeah. I, I think Leslie's right. I think what you do, it's an information gathering exercise in a lot of ways. You're looking for ideas. You're looking for what's important to the people of Scotland. Then you can put into a document that essentially is used to control the people that wield the power. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, God help us if it ever happens, but you write the right things into that constitution, and a Tory government in Scotland is not going to take your health service away. But that, that, that was one thing with a health service, um, which is. The strange thing with the no campaign, so you're, you're basically taking a, looking at the Labour Party, which seems to be really leading it. Big hitters like... Leading what? Breaking up the Zell service? Well, that's where they started. The, like, I mean, Labour, I mean, it was SNP, you do have to thank. But, um, we still have uh, a health service with really no input from the private sector in it. Um, but still believe in social housing, where, where you actually make it accountable, because it's... it's it's council housing. Whole space of thing where they think the state, you know, where it's a mixed economy and that classic social democratic, it's not right. Well, it's that way. Really it does seem to be a, a schism between the body politic in Scotland and in South East England. And I dare say there's a lot of uh, people in the north of England would uh, join up with us as well. Not being many, sense, yeah. men would, 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 would want to have a, something, a more social democratic country. Um, there was a letter I just drew your attention to before we sat down here. Um, someone there, Angela, not Davis, but <laughs> yeah. she was suggesting that uh, a, a referendum, that the, the yes campaign should be charged with um, proposing a constitution. Um, and it, but I don't think we should put it in the hands of the yes campaign. That would definitely 
stop them, anybody from the no campaign getting involved in, in writing a constitution. I feel that uh, both sides of the referendum argument are entitled to take part in, in discussing what kind of cost, written constitution Scotland should have. Absolutely, it's going to be all encompassing and based on principles. Maybe you could have um, to involve everybody, to involve civic and civic le legal and parliamentary in Scotland altogether. <coughs> that they would be tasked if you had a small commission encompassing people from various parts of society on consulting with the whole population of Scotland on a on a standard well, basis. Can I ask a simple question? <laughs> I think it's simple. Do we start now? Or do we wait till after the referendum? We start now, we get people thinking. We start the process. What we do is we undercut the the elites, the politicians. We make this a people's constitution. And how do you do that? I'm sorry, um, I need smarter people than me. Yeah. But that's what we do now. We we make if we can find a way to involve the people, the politicians will jump on the bandwagon because they always do. But when it's driven well, what about popular demand, okay. Well, what what about financing a movement? Well, I mean, it's just jumped in my head. You treat it like the census. Every single household gets copies enough for every person in that household of every single idea, and you put a tick box beside it. Yeah, but, but where does the money come from to do that? Well, I'm sorry, it comes from us. It comes from the government. We, I mean, to get to that point, to produce that document, it says, what would you like to see in the Constitution? Well, I think that by producing that Constitution, an outline Constitution, it's got to be brought down to two sides of A4, that um, people would be much better informed when it comes to the referendum day. Yeah, but you, your, your problem with bringing it down to two sides of A4 is when it has to be written in legal speak, and that's that's when it gets handed back to the elites, and that's when they twist it. Well, not necessarily the legal speak actually comes after, because when you present a bill, um, a bill comes in which has the basic skeleton of what what you say the, the the new 205 alcohol that has the bones of where all your um, the things you you wish to attain. And then for about 18 months after that, they're busy working out the legalese to put the flesh on the bones. And that, and that to me, is your problem. Well, you're always going to have to, at some point, you have to get involved put in, in the hands yeah. of the lawyers. And yeah, the, but the at, that, at that point, the 50-50 becomes 50-50 under certain circumstances. Oh, you mean that you're back to what the content should be? Well, but that's when the content gets played with, watered down, softened, well, I'm not even certain that... that, no. that, that and that's what you don't want. Oh, that, that, that there, there should be, a, when, when it comes to drawing up even a skeleton or anything to do with the Constitution, anything that can be remotely, um, that can affect the future independent, maybe in Scotland, um, should be completely gender balanced. But you mean, but it's well, yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, what I'm saying is once you give it into the hands yes. of the Constitution, yeah, but, yeah. but not even, if, if, you, if you bring in 50-50, gender 50-50, you then have to consider um, perhaps equal rights to marriage. Now look, look at the, the stuffy that is, that's just, look at what's going on with that at the moment. We yeah. might want that in a constitution, but you're never going to get a, a, a constitution that, written in two years. But that's the point here. With that much detail in it. The other, thing, going the other, the other thing that, that should be in the constitution, hmm? the other thing that should be in any constitution is a renewal clause, i.e. every generation, every 20 years, every 25 years, it should be looked at. Revisit it, yeah, and have a look to bring it up to date. But when you talk about equal marriage, um, well, the fascists take over. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, all I'm saying is, it, it, it's, as soon as you t t go, go into the, the detail it, it, that much, that there are lots of other things that you would like to consider. And if you if there's this list, shopping list of, of basic rights, Beyond, well, I think we would have, probably have to be adopting the, the, the European Convention of Human Rights and working well, on that. But, but in the nation, that, that's not a problem. That's basically a given. I mean, you pick up any modern constitution, and we could basically photocopy it and hand it well, to the Parliament. Yeah. But there are things in there that would make it a Scottish constitution, and I would argue that social equality is what Scotland's about. And that should be part of the Constitution. How we 
force, and I do believe we will have to force that on politicians. But no, yeah, it's really I mean, the question. You, I mean, it's all, it's all about you know, needing things like two-thirds majorities or even bigger, and you can only face uh, you can only revisit the constitution with a five-year gap, and these are the things you write in to safeguard your constitution. But these things you'll find will, will come in. At the end of the day, if you want an independent country, whatever it takes, with constitution wise or anything, uh, the abolition looking after people has gone, you'll do it. And you can't change it without a referendum. Well, gentlemen, we've already talked about 20 minutes, and we don't want to bore our uh, viewers. But um, I think we'll be revisiting this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you.